Good morning. We're going to talk about the new listing agreement for 2021. I just filled one out this week. Brandon and I were in the office earlier this week and Meredith was filling out one as well. So we were trying to just talk through it. Uh, I somewhat talked through with Nate with his earlier this week. Hadn't filled out one of these yet. It's a little bit different, but at the same time, it's still mostly the same. So I just wanted to go kind of page by page like we would if we were sitting together and make sure that everybody is comfortable with what's in there. And I'll start the conversation just asking, does anybody have any questions or things that they've experienced going through it so far? Because I know a couple of you have had listings pop up in the last week or so, like, uh, like Nate did. Uh, Meredith's working on hers. Krista, don't you have a new listing coming? How did you handle it? Sorry, I'm here. I'm just on puppy mode. Um, we did not sign docs yet. Okay. I mean, they're going to be signed, but just the way I operate, they're not signed yet. So you haven't filled it out or gone through that no. process. Yet. Okay, well, hopefully this will be helpful then, um, just so you feel good about it. All right, um, so if there's no questions, let's just zip through this thing line by line or page by page and see if we have any questions. A lot of it, again, is similar to it has been in the past. You've got the seller. Can you guys see my screen in the document? Can you guys see the document? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes. All right, so you got the seller here and then the firm, right? The effective date because it's not already listed with someone else, so you're checking the first box and then the expiration of the agreement, right? Property address, and then your legal description. I always use the same three things for listings and for purchases. I use the lot number, I use the subdivision, and I use the pin. I was always taught that three is enough. I never use the deed book or the page unless I get some agent that's really persnickety and wants everything filled out. Um, coming on down to page three, Items leased or not owned, this is relatively self-explanatory. Just make sure that you're listing anything here that applies from this list or similar that are going to convey. Do they rent antennas? Do they rent the security system, et cetera? Those don't convey. Make sure you list it here um, so you can point it out in the listing. Other items that don't convey. These people are saying up front, we are not planning for the refrigerator washer and dryer to convey. Now, how does that really matter? Because people might say that, but then how often do you see it in the listing agreements? Very rarely, right? That refrigerator, wash and dryer don't convey. Most times you just leave it out there and let it be a negotiation point because we're all talking about the net anyways, right? But if, you're buy, if your seller is very specific about it, make sure you put it here and then relay it one way or another. Typically agent comments or agent remarks is gonna be the best place to do that. Any questions about that? And then if there's any other personal property, et cetera. Home warranty, they are not agreeing to a home warranty. Our listing price, and then the types of financing that we believe are applicable. The firm's compensation, 6%, 90 days. Moving on down to the cooperation with other firms. We don't do sub-agency, we cooperate with buyer agents, and the triangle is 2.4%. There's not a standard, let me be very clear about that in case the Real Estate Commission watches this video, there's not a standard, that's our team number. Now we get to kind of what is the can be the tricky part, right? And this is what Nate and I talked about, the commencement of marketing. So this is when you can start marketing the property. This is not the effective day of the agreement, which is the day that it's signed. This is the date that you can actually go live or coming soon. It's one of those days, either live or coming soon. And then we come down a little bit further to coming soon. And if you are, if this date is a coming soon date and not the actual live date, then the live date will go in the coming soon box, the day that it must be active. Any questions about that? Fantastic. All right. Uh, we'll keep on moving. We want these. I think it's clearer than the old one.
Moving on down, we are not Office exclusive. We do want them to use lock boxes. Um, we do not maintain a trust account, thank the Lord. Um, several seller representations own for a year. This is always going to be based on your property only, of course. Hopefully, they're not under bankrupt protection and it's not contemplating bankrupt protection. Um, not a mobile home. HOA, this one has two homeowners associations, so they are both listed there. Of course, you want to check that you've provided those forms to them. This home in particular does not have flood insurance. It's not a flood zone. There's not a termite bond. There is a lien, blah, blah, blah. Nothing else applies. There's no lease, no FHA appraisal, no pending special assessments that we're aware of. There's no fuel tank. We put NA here because they have no circumstances that prohibit them from marketing and then closing on the property. Moving on to page 10, the seller is not agreeing to do a home inspection in advance. We have sent them the questions and answers on home inspections. No other terms and conditions. This would be just for those of you who may have come across this before. If you've got a seller who's like, my friend has a buddy who's interested in buying the house. And, you know, if they buy the house, I don't want to pay your commission. Right. And in a situation like that, this would be the exception spot where you could put if Bob Smith buys the house, seller will pay me no commission and will reimburse for photography and marketing. Something like that. Any questions about that? Dual agency, we're always gonna do that just to protect us as we've been taught, even though we will not actually do dual agency, we will do designated. The MLS boards suggest that we just use the dual agency language. And then the rest of this is boilerplate and everybody signs on the last page. Any questions about that? So the only part that you wouldn't have them initial would be that also office exclusive thing. Yes. They were we'll, initial against all those other things, but you wouldn't yeah. have that because that's a difference between the previous one where it was a checkbox, not initials. Right. They've added more initials than checkboxes. But so office exclusive means um, we're, we're not going to really market it to anyone and we're saying we can only represent the buyer as well, which is weird, um, but it happens. So it's typically like a new construction thing. Any questions or other points we, we wanna revisit on this? Now, I will say this, there are also coming soon documents that I'm not going to get into this into with this because they're different for each area, right? We've got one for the triangle and then we've got one for the coast that talks about coming soon. In the, in the triangle, you can go ahead and sign this today, even though if you saw our coming soon date on this one wasn't until August 2nd and the live date wasn't until November 1st. I know we've talked at the tri at the coast about holding off on signatures until the 30 days out because of how it is down there. So just keep that in mind. Any questions about that? It seems like we're on the same page. With, with the um, marketing date and the coming soon date, could you, those dates, you would want them as soon as possible because you could essentially you could start you could go live later than that date correct or you have to go on that date you just you, couldn't go before you cannot go live later than this date okay if you go coming soon on this date it must be no later than 30 days after you go coming soon that you go active so whatever day that is, you must activate 30 days from then. 
and you can't do any marketing before coming soon. So before you get to this commencement of marketing date, and again, it doesn't have to be the effective date of the contract, before you get to the commencement of marketing date, you can't post about it on Facebook, you can't put a sign in the yard, you can't be talking about it or marketing them in any ways. If you're representing the seller, you should not be doing that. If a listing agent does that for one of their properties and tells you because you have a buyer that's interested, well, that's the listing agent's issue, not your issue. But as a listing agent, you cannot market it until the commencement of marketing date. And it must be active no more than 30 days after the commencement of marketing date. Any questions? Meredith, if you're in a situation where you want, to, well, you've got it coming soon, and let's say you're doing coming soon for two weeks, but then you decide to speed up that date, you can do that. You just need to change the active date, strike through it, change the active date, and you and the sellers initial the change. Okay, yeah, that's kind of what I was wondering if there was a change of plans with that active date, how you would handle that. Okay, that makes sense though. Actually, my understanding is you can always activate earlier. You just can't activate past the date. Yeah, once you put the um, delayed marketing date in the MLS here, you can't change it. It goes live no matter what. That's the same thing in the triangle. You would have to get all new documents to change it and effectively terminate that listing. It would be a new listing. I know that's the case at the coast because I've been through it before. Any other questions? I think it's rel relatively straightforward, but like I told Meredith when I was doing it earlier this week, I feel like every time I do a listing agreement, it's the first time I've done it and my eyes kind of go crossed. So just best to take our time and make sure that we feel good about it and talk through it and have this to revisit. You know, when you write one a month from now, if you don't feel good about it, come back and check this out. Any questions? You guys are so quiet. All right, then. Well, there's nothing to stick around for. You guys go have a great day and go uh, write up a listing agreement. And let me know if I can help, okay? Thanks. Thank hey. you, everybody. Bye. Sounds good.